The Wood Whisperer is sponsored by Powermatic, Type Bond, and special sponsor, Walrus Oil. So today we've got a really cool project for you. This is another one that my assistant John has designed. Um, he's got some cool ideas and it's fun to bring them to life. So this is a kid's daybed. It's a, a twin size daybed that um, hopefully in the future can convert to a king size bed. So this side, beautiful side rail here is actually the size that it would need to be to be a headboard for a king size bed. Um, so functionally, that was the sort of thing we wanted to accomplish. Got a nice little safety rail up here and a bunch of slats, of course, to support a twin size mattress. So the focal point clearly on this thing is this headboard, which is amazing. So uh, this was all John's brainchild, so tell us about it. I love the mountains um, and they always inspire me. And so I was looking at the Denver cityscape mountains and um, I wanted to recreate those. And so I just brought it into the computer and copied them as best as I could. It's not a perfect recreation, but it um, gives you all the layers that you can see from, from Denver. My buddy Shannon looked at it. He is familiar with this mountain range and was like, I recognize everything. This was really our big starting point. We wanted to make sure we could accomplish a headboard that looks like this with whatever techniques it took, whatever species of wood it would take to make this thing look cool. So here we are. All right, so we're gonna get started with that specifically, the headboard. John used his fusion sketch to produce a 2D outline of the headboard's mountain range. We had large prints made so that we could cut them out and use them as templates. The primary panel of the headboard will be made from maple so that we get that snow-capped mountain effect. It's basically just a big panel, so if you want to learn more about making large panels, check out my video on, you guessed it, making large panels. Next is the quarter inch oak panel. The oak has a nice knot that John wanted to include as a feature, so we gave it a little bit of an epoxy fill before planing it to size and gluing up. Next is the quarter inch walnut layer. And now we'll bring some cherry down to a half inch and torrified oak down to three quarters of an inch. Now I can't just blow past a cool piece of wood like that without actually talking about what it is. So torrified wood or thermally modified wood is actually really cool stuff. Now the way they make it is a process called torrefaction. It's not unlike how we make charcoal. Imagine putting the wood into a very hot oven, in fact so hot that it would normally just burst into flames. But because it's an environment without much oxygen, we don't get combustion. But what we do get is a piece of wood that is forever modified. Basically, all the sugars, all the volatiles, the things inside the wood fibers, they're all burned off, and the wood becomes quite a bit more stable. And if you're not careful, if the process isn't done well, you can end up with something that's very, very brittle, but it certainly does get harder. Right? The other thing is, this is no longer attractive to insects and fungus and things that would eventually rot wood, which means it's actually a pretty decent wood for things like outdoor furniture. And one of my favorite things about it is the color change. Now, you might be familiar with this color change. It's called the Maillard reaction. It's something that we have that happens in the kitchen all the time. You make a piece of toast, that browning is the Maillard reaction. And same thing for a nice steak. You put a beautiful crust on a gorgeous steak, Maillard reaction. Right now, the cool thing about the color though, is check this out. It's all the way through the thickness. So very cool stuff, may not be appropriate for all projects, but I really think torrified or thermally treated wood is a cool thing. So look it up. Might be good for a project in the future. With each panel at rough size, you can kind of see how they're gonna to go together. We'll start by taping the first template to the maple board. Obviously these lines aren't critical. As long as we get close, it should be fine. To make the cuts, we decide to go with a nice fine blade on the jigsaw. A piece of this size is a little bit too unruly for the bandsaw, so we canned that idea. The CNC would work, but my CNC only has a four foot capacity, so that's a no go. Maybe there's another smarter way to do this, but this was the best thing we could come up with. The cut left by the jigsaw is pretty rough, so we'll clean it up with rasps, scrapers, and sanding. Now we can trim the template down to the next level and trace the mountain range onto the oak. 
Cutting and cleanup is the same as before. Now the smaller pieces are marked and cut to size. These smaller pieces are easy enough to cut at the bandsaw. The three front pieces will actually be nested together, so we left the blanks a little bit long on one side so that we can trace the shape of the adjoining piece and then match them up. We want these pieces to be cut accurately, so for maybe the second time ever on this show, we'll bust out the scroll saw. Chances are, the pieces won't match up perfectly right off the saw, so when we bring them together, we can mark the areas that need a little bit of cleanup. And if you want to be super picky about it, you can do something like this. Holding carbon paper between the pieces and then yanking the paper out will mark the areas where the material protrudes too much. This it gives me really bad flashbacks of my last dental crown. In the end, like my stepdad always said, you won't notice it riding a horse at 30 miles an hour down Broad Street. He also used to say things like, you're slick, but not slick enough to slide down barbed wire, and granddaddy long legs show me where the cows are. So take his advice with a grain of salt. The fitting on the other piece follows the same technique. Now we're gonna glue everything together. We'll place some lines for reference so that we know where to put the glue. A few brad nails will stop the pieces from moving around while we get some clamps and calls in place. Now, with so many species of wood being glued together, you might be wondering if this headboard panel is gonna behave over time or if it's gonna warp. I don't know. We'll have to get back to you. So now the headboard is jointed and cut to final length. After all this work, we still have a bed to make, so we'll start making the legs and the rails. The legs are a glue up from 8 quarter stock, long ones for the back and short ones for the front. The rails are made from 5 quarter stock for a final 1 inch thickness. Using a story stick, John carefully marks the locations of the mortises. We want this thing to be knocked down, so we're using a combination of dominoes and domino 500 connectors. This is all incredibly expensive stuff, but honestly, I just haven't found anything better for knockdown furniture. Once the primary mortises are cut, we can turn our attention to the knockdown connectors. Proper alignment is crucial, and you have to get the depths just right too, but if you follow the instructions, it's not too bad. I actually have a video on these connectors from a few years back that you might want to check out. Below the surface. Time for a test fit. That looks pretty good, so now we can work on attaching the headboard to the rear legs. The 
The long rails need a set of cleats that help support the bed slats. These are just cutoffs from the project that are glued onto the inside of the rails. Next, we'll glue the dominoes into the rails. They'll essentially become integral tenons at this point and no glue will be used on the connection when it joins to the legs. And now we'll cut some poplar down to size for the slats. When it comes to slats that you're never really going to see, there's no reason to waste material making them a uniform width. Instead, we just cut them to length, clean them up, and make sure there's enough support for the mattress. At each end, we'll pre-drill for countersunk screws that'll be used for the final assembly. Now for the safety rail. We had a talk and decided that it would be pretty cool to have yet another mountain range, or more appropriately, foothills. So we'll use some 5 quarter walnut for the rail itself. And since this is the board that the little one is likely to come into contact with more often, the foothills work nicely because there's no sharp peaks. The safety rail will be held in place by supports that are screwed to the inside of the frame. And that's approximately where it's going to be attached, with the option to remove it as John's daughter gets older. Now it's time for the finish. And time for an ad. As we all know, ads require something fancy like dramatic lighting. When building furniture for kids, it's always nice to use something that's 100% safe. Walrus oil products are not just safe, they're made with food grade ingredients with names that you can actually pronounce. The product we're using is Walrus Oil's Furniture Butter. It's a mixture of plant-based polymerized oils and hard waxes and is a nice creamy, buttery consistency. Application could not be easier. I like to use a rag, working the mixture into the surface in a very thin coating. This stuff isn't like a varnish or a lacquer, so you can take your time to romance the finish into the surface. Did I mention that it smells great thanks to a hint of lime? Once the surface is completely coated, I like to go back to look for any dry spots where the wood absorbed all of the oil, and I'll apply a little bit more. The next day, we can come back and buff off any remaining finish on the surface. From here, you could apply as many coats as you like, or you could look into some of Walrus Oil's other products and maybe finish it off with some furniture wax. And because this finish isn't a thick film, maintenance is a breeze, and you could reapply the finish at any time. I've got a light water ring on this test board, so I'm going to sand it lightly, then reapply the furniture butter to the affected area. Wipe away the excess, and the flaw is gone. You can learn more about Walrus Oil at walrusoil.com, and for a limited time, you can get 20% off using the code MARK. With the finish applied, we can now do a final assembly. Well, not the final, but the final one here in my shop. Here's a nice shot of uh, me and John playing a game of woodworker charades. What is it? Like this? Go this Cheers. way. Upside down. There you go. Star Wars! So that will probably lean a little bit until the screws are in, but that is not bad. All right, what do you think? I think it's excellent. I am excited to see Ray's reaction and to see her sleeping on this bed that I made. I think some of the details, like when you do something like this, you don't always know exactly how it's going to come out. But now that it's together, you could see the height of the bed roughly. You could see the layout of the mountains. The fact that we don't have as much of a chance of things going under the headboard or under these side rails. You have to really get those numbers just right. And uh, I think this is going to work out nicely. Mm -hmm. Actually, working out nicely. I think this will be nice just to keep it here. Do we have to send it to your house? I mean, I guess you could pay me for it. <laughs> <laughs> this is nap time, baby. What do you think? Yeah. Do you like it? Yeah. Oh my goodness, climb in. What's behind you? The mountains. Yeah? It's so nice. This is my bed. <laughs> Can you say thanks, Daddy? Thanks, Dada. Okay, that's it. Have a great day. Bye-bye.
All right, so the finish is applied. This thing's looking good. That looks weird. <laughs> you can see here the natural woodworker in its habitat, finishing the piece. Right. Birds in the background, chirping. <laughs> I thought you were making the woodworker noise. <laughs> <laughs> what is the woodworker noise? I don't know.